Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in with a that time I was reincarnated as a slime video this time. Specifically, we are covering some stuff that the anime did not adapt from the slime light novel for the most recent season, season 2, part 2. This is a video about some of the demon lords. And I say some because this video doesn't really cover Clayman and Frey and Carry On. No, this is a video covering the new demon lords that viewers were introduced to. So, what you need to know is that in the original light novel, there was a interlude chapter during which you found out information about a bunch of these new faces. Now, to the anime's credit, this thing was told to us entirely through narration, so it would be actually very difficult to try and convey this knowledge. That said, they did it, so I want to make sure that you guys are aware, and I want to make sure that the anime viewers are at the same level as the light novel readers. So, let's just get into it. Things you didn't know about the Demon Lords, their origins, and other facts. Starting it off with Guy Crimson. Guy is one of the seven primordial demons, like Diablo. Where Diablo is noir, Guy is rogue, or red. Did you know he was the first Demon Lord to be summoned as an Arc Demon? He was summoned by a weak human that wanted him to destroy the nation that the summoner was at war with. Guy ultimately did that. He then destroyed the summoner's nation. This was how he earned his name, Guy. And it was noted that this sounds like the shrieks that people made as he crushed them. Note, Guy was said to have earned his name. And we're talking about him earning his name. This is talking about the voice of the world. Or at least that's what I would infer from this. Upon being named, Guy realized that he became a true demon lord. Guy is served by two other primordial demons, Vert and Blue. They had come with him when he was initially summoned. Guy's evolution caused them to become demon peers. Guy, on a whim named Vert Misery and Blue Rain. Misery was named after, you guessed it, Misery and Blue, well that one's actually an interesting one, was named after the Rain of Blood. You can imagine where that blood came from. Moving on, let's talk about Milim. Milim was the second to awaken to being a demon lord. And again, note, awaken. From earlier, we know that Milim was born to a human and a dragon father. After Milim's father had Milim take the majority of his power, he took on a physical form and became the founder of dragons. All dragons come from Milam's father, Veldanava, the Star King Dragon. We know the story of Milam destroying a nation after it killed her dragon, her friend. The nation killing caused Milam to awaken as a demon lord. Similar to how Rimuru awakened as a demon lord after taking a certain amount of lives. Worth noting, this is something that was kind of slipped in there. Uh, Milam's father wanted to reincarnate in the pet dragon that Milam had. So that was actually a pretty interesting wrinkle. Anyway, Milam almost wiped out the world due to all the extra power she got from awakening. Guy was the one that stopped Milim after fighting her for 7 days and 7 nights. The battle ended when Milim got her senses back. The person who got Milim's senses back however was Ramirez. And this leads us to Ramirez. Ramirez, at that time a leader of spirits, sacrificed her power to stop Milim. It was through this sacrifice that Ramirez took motor form and became a self-resurrecting fairy. It's noted that Ramirez did not awaken to the role of Demon Lord. So she's not the true Demon Lord in the way some other characters are. So now let's talk about Guy, Milam, and Ramirez. It was noted that these are the first three Demon Lords, and it was noted that they had different goals. Guy wants to find the furthest reaches of power. He's a power seeker. Milam just wants to live free, and Ramirez wants to maintain balance in the world. Which makes sense given what she ultimately did, intervening with Guy and Milam. It was noted that these three could see each other as equals because they had such separate goals. After the first three came the second generation of demon lords noted to be weaker than the first generation. First off, you had Dagrul. He was a giant that protected the gates to heaven. His body was super imbued with the holy element. And due to this holy element, the demon lord seed, the thing that's really critical to the formation of a demon lord, couldn't be nourished. He's a demon lord though. Because he's just that strong. We're talking now purely in position. He is also noted to be Guy's old friend. At least that's what the narration makes it sound like. Next up, Vampire. The one that Veldora fought. This girl. She has a lot of things going on in the background. She is noted to be a vampire from ancient times. She is noted to be conniving. She's noted to be having this other vampire sitting in for her as the official demon lord. And we know that this demon lord was awakened. Next we have Dino. He's noted to be someone who fell from heaven. Extremely lazy, but he's very interesting. Noted to be a couch surfer and a freeloader pretty much. Uh, this demon lord is awakened. Again, super lazy though. He was crashing with Dagrul at uh, the time of Alpergus. Now we move on to the seventh, Leon. Leon was noted to be Guy's friend. He was a former human and a former hero. 
His unique upbringing led him to getting an ultimate skill and meeting Gi's standard for demon lords. Now to talk about these seven demon lords as a group. They have survived multiple great wars or Tenma wars. Um, that is a key word. Keep that in mind. They have survived them. These wars made it so that all of these demon lords have ultimate skills by this time period. They are not chumps. Now moving into Gi's opinions on the Demon Lord. Gi actually has a lot more agendas going on. So at the time of the big meeting, Gi was exciting noting that his heart hadn't sung like this for hundreds of years. He wanted the kind of change that this world Purgus was going to be bringing. Gi himself doesn't care about the number of Demon Lords. He just wants them to be strong enough to survive the wars. It was noted however that because of too much egotistical infighting, the number was set to a maximum of 10 members. Again, Gi himself doesn't care. He was against this artificial limit. Gi went to this new meeting thinking that a new era should come in, one where awakened demon lords were the ones that ruled. In other words, this was Gi saying he was pretty much done with demon lords at the level of Frey, Carrion, and Clayman. Though given the situation with Dagrul and Ramirez, Gi is most likely completely happy with letting those two stay given that they have enough power for it. Anyway, those were the little details that you might have missed out from the anime. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions about slime in general down below. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.